Okay, so this week there's uh, some ratio practice to be done. So let's have a quick look at the key ideas behind this. So the first question, uh, 20 sweets, uh, 12 sweets of mints, the rest of sweet stuff is. Write down the ratio of the number of mints. So let's get the headings uh, to the number of toughies. So I would always recommend you write down your headings for each part of the ratio. And we're talking about mints. And there are 20 sweets, so that's 12 mints. And there's eight toughies. But then we reread the question and we make sure we've identified uh, key bits of information. And it's asking us to make sure we write our answer in the simplest form. So we must make sure we go down to the smallest uh, numbers we can. Uh, so if we're looking for common factors, then the highest common factor of 12 and 8 is 4. So divide uh, both these sides by 4. So for every three mints, there are two toughies. So that's going to be our final answer for that one. Pizza, again, we've got this uh, ratio given to us. So again, we should do headings. So we've got cheese, topping, and dough. And we're told it's in the ratio of two to three to five. We then look at the information they give us in the question. And we can see they've given us 70 grams of dough. So we know we've got 70 grams there. And it then it says work out the number of grams of all the other components. So we look for the factor and the dough has gone times 14, so 5 times 14 gave us 70, so that means all the other parts of the ratio must be multiplied by the same factor. And then they'll still be in the same ratio, but obviously in grams rather than the uh, 235. So 28 grams of cheese and 42 grams of topping. So 28 grams and 42 grams. So again, it's the key idea of writing the headings, write the ratio down, put any numbers in that you knew. We knew the 70 grams was in the information given to us. Look for the scale factor, and then the same factor has to happen to all parts of the ratio to keep the 2 to 3 5 working. Okay, so the next question uh, talks about an alloy. Uh, it's made of tin and copper. So again, headings, so tin and copper. And they're telling us it's in the ratio of 1 to 4. So they made 35 grams of the alloy. So they're not telling us anything about either of these components uh, directly. So basically this is telling us that 1 fifth of the alloy is tin. And 4 fifths of the alloy is copper. So we've got the fifths because 1 plus 4 is 5. So we're talking about uh, 5 uh, bits to this uh, ratio. So for every one of tin, we need four of copper, so five bits altogether. And we talk about ratios as fractions uh, when we're talking about sharing out. Uh, it's quite an easy way then of thinking what's going on. So we've got 35 grams of alloy, so tin is one fifth of that. So we've got to do the tin first. So tin, one fifth of 35. To do a fifth of anything, we divide by five. So 35 divided by five is seven grams of tin. That's the question. If the question had asked us how much copper, and once we've got the tin value, we can just take 7 grams away from there. So that's um, the first part of that question. The second part of the question um, used 18 grams of tin to make some of the alloy. So again, we think what the ratio said. It said the tin to the copper was 1 to 4. It's telling us that we're using 18 grams, so we can fill in some information now. So for every one gram, use four. So going this way, we times it by four. So we can times by four here. So 18 times four, 72 grams. So for every uh, 18 grams of tin, we need 72 grams of uh, copper. And that gives us the ratio of one to four. Uh, classic recipe problem. Um, so we look at the key information again. So we've got 10 chocolate uh, chip cookie recipe here. And the question wants you to work out the recipe for 15. Well, quite often with recipe questions, there'll be a nice connection between the uh, number for the recipe itself and the actual number they want you to work out. In this case, we can see that if we have the 10 recipe, that'll give us enough for five more chip cookies, chocolate chip chippy, uh, cookies. So we're going to halve this recipe and add it on to get the recipe for 15. So 5 cookies 
we're going to end up with 50 grams of flour, 30 grams of sugar extra, uh, 25 grams, uh, 20 grams, and one egg. So that's for the five cookies. So altogether, then we need to add the 10 cookie number to the five cookie number, and then that'll give us the total. So we've got 150 grams of that, and 90 grams of that. We're adding up the extra half bit, uh, 75 grams, uh, 60 grams, and we need an extra egg, so three eggs. So that'd be the uh, recipe for the thing. So the next question says, 21 questions in a test, that's important, and the questions is on biology, chemistry, physics. So that's biology, chemistry, and physics. What fraction of the questions are on chemistry? Well, we can see that the ratio has seven uh, parts to it, so four there, plus two, plus one. So all the ratio, all the fractions will be out of seven, and chemistry was two, so that's two out of seven. So 4 plus 2 plus 1, 7. So we're talking about sevenths for each section of the ratio. Uh, work out the number of questions that are on biology. Well, biology was 4 sevenths of the questions. 4 out of the 7. So 4 sevenths of the questions for biology. And there were 21 questions altogether. So it's 4 sevenths of 21. And to do that, we will do 21 divided by 7 to get 1 seventh. And then we times that by 4 to get 4 sevenths. So there was 12 questions on biology. Um, we've got Lillian, so again put the headings. So Lillian, Max and Nazir. And they're sharing the sum of money in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 5. So what fraction of the money does Max receive? Well, when we look at this, uh, we add up all the components of the ratio. We've got 2 plus 3 is 5 plus that is 10. So we're talking about working with tenths. And it says max. So max got 3. So that was 3 out of tenths. So 3 tenths. Uh, Nazir received £60. Pounds. So again, we're looking at the ratio 2 to 3 to 5. Uh, and Nazir got £60. Pounds. So we can fill some information in for Nazia, and that then tells us what our multiplying factor is to turn all the other components into their amount of money. So 5 times 12 is 60, so we've got to multiply everything by 12. And we want Lillian, so 2 times 12, 24 pounds. So the answer here, 24 pounds. So again, it's a, just a good idea to write down the headings for each part of the ratio. And then to see if there's any information given. If there is, then you can work out a multiplying factor. If there isn't, then it's going to be one of those share problems where you're best to work out a fraction of an amount. Okay, so here we've got a question about a scale, scale model. And it's saying the length of the model is 18 and the length of the real plane is 45 meters. And it wants the ratio of the length of the model to the real. So we want the model to real, and they're telling us 18 centimetres was the model. And what we need to remember with ratios is that they have to have the same units for all parts of a ratio. So that's important because this question is given us centimetres for one bit and metres for the other bit. So it's really important here we don't just write down 45, we have to write down 4500 every meter 100 centimeters. The question says it wants the answer in the form of 1 to n, so 1 to n, and we've got to ask ourselves, well this has got to turn into this in some way, and we'll be divided by 18, therefore we're going to divide that by 18. Okay, and we recognize there's a nice connection here because both of these are in the 9 times table, so there must be a way of doing this sum without uh, too much complications. So we're saying 4,500 uh, 4, divided by 18. So both of these divide by 9. So we're going to be looking at um, 500 divided by 2. And therefore we're going to halve down again. So that's going to be 250. So the answer is 1 
to 250. So that's the scale that the model used. So for every one centimeter on the model, it's 250 centimeters in real or two and a half meters in real. So next question. Uh, Adam Bob shared 240 pounds. So Adam Bob, so that's, um, that's Bob. Give some headings. Um, and Anne gave half her share. So let's work out uh, how much each person got. So it's three and five, that's eight parts altogether. So three eighths was Anne, and five eighths was Bob. £240 divided by eight will tell us what one eighth is. So £30. So Anne got three times that. So Anne got £90. And Bob got five times that. So Bob got £150. So that's how much each person got from the ratio, because we worked out our uh, scale factor was 30 to turn these numbers into the amount they got. So Anne gave half her share to Colin. So half of 90 is £45. So this is Colin. And Bob gave a tenth of his share to, uh, to Colin. So £150. So let's do a tenth of divided by 10. So fifteen pounds. So Colin altogether got sixty pounds in total. So what fraction it says of two hundred forty pounds did Colin receive? So a fraction we recognise is one number over another whole number. So it was sixty pounds out of the two hundred and forty altogether, because it says what fraction of the two hundred and forty. So that's why two hundred and forty on the uh, denominator position. The 60 is how she got, so it's that fraction. But like all fraction questions, we must remember to simplify down. And we look for the highest common factor of both of these numbers to then uh, share down by. So we can see that both of these are in the 60 times table. So 60 into there is uh, 1, and 60 into there is 4. So we divide it by 60 as the highest common factor. And that gave us the final answer of 1 quarter. So this question's uh, talking about chocolates. There's 40 altogether, 12 plain remaining chocolates are milk. So work out the ratio of the plain to the number of milk. So we want plain, so headings again, to milk. And they told us there were 12 plain, and there were 40 chocolates altogether. So we have to do 40, so the milk chocolates. 40 take away 12, 28, so that's going to be 28. But then we read the question and it says we want the simplest form. So we look for the highest common factor of 12 and 28, so which is 4. So we divide by 4, both sides. And that gives us 12 divided by 4 is 3. So, so basically the ratio is saying that for every 3 plain chocolates, there will be 7 milk chocolates. And every 12 there's 28. So they're in the same ratio. It's just that this one's being built up by a factor of 4. So I'll give you a ratio of the simplest form. So that's going to be 3 to 7. Some plain chocolates are added to the box, so the ratio of the number of plain chocolates to the number of milk chocolates is 1 to 2. So let's have a look. So we've got plain, and we've got milk, and we want the ratio to be 1 to 2. So some plain chocolates are added to the box, so that means that the milk chocolates will be the same as what they were before. So there were 28 milk chocolates originally. So we've got a scale factor there of 14, so we need to times the other side by 14. So basically we need 14 plain chocolates. And there were 12 of them originally, so 12 already. So I need two more. So just explain a little bit about what went on, so the answer there will be two more. So again, it's looking at the uh, ratio, giving us some headings. Uh, the ratio they told us to have was 1 to 2. We already knew the 28 uh, from the question above. And the factor then was 14. And therefore the other side was multiplied by 14 as well. OK, so last question then on uh, this uh, ratio practice. So Jim makes a model for his school. He uses a scale of 1 to 50. So we recognize that's going to be uh, the model to the real uh, is 1 to 50. Now this is what they call a linear scale factor. 
because we're talking about what happens to the linear lengths. So this is a linear scale factor of 50. And this question is talking about the area of the door. So we've got to work out what's called an area scale factor because we're talking about how the area changes. So literally what we're talking about is that for every one centimetre in the real, the area, we've got to talk about doing it by 50 by 50 because we're talking about how the area changes. So for every one is 50, so every one square centimetre is the same as 50 times 50 square centimetres. So 50 times 50 is 2,500 square centimetres. So in terms of the area scale factors, how the area changes, then the scale factor will be for every one square centimetre, it's going to be the same as 2,500 square centimetres on the real. So the question told us that we were dealing with 8 square centimetres on the model. So we have to multiply by 8 to get that 1 to become 8. So we have to multiply this by 8 as well. So 2,500 times 8. Well, double it first is 5,000. 5, double it again is 10,000. Double it again is 20,000. So that's going to be 20,000 square centimetres. So 20,000 square centimetres. So just be a bit careful with this one because the question gave us a linear scale factor telling us that for every one centimetre the real is 50 centimetres but then we realise that this is talking about area so we need an area scale factor so it's again it's about watching for that key information and we can see that for every square centimetre on the original then we're saying it's the same as 50 by 50 centimetres on the real item, the door itself. That's ratio and uh, scale, so hopefully uh, of use, guys. Okay, just one slight addendum to one of the questions. Uh, question 3b, um, I did the classic, I didn't read the question carefully. It said work out the weight of alloy. So it didn't just want to know the copper weight, it wanted to know the weight of everything. So we must remember to read questions carefully. So again, it's about looking for that key information and therefore we need a total weight which will be these two figures added together so 18 plus 72 90 grams so our final answer here should be 90 grams so again it's about reading questions carefully guys